This is my wife's 2005 Ford Escape. And for the last few months, we've been noticing a stumble at highway speeds at low RPM, like doing 45 miles an hour, uh, less than 2000 RPM, and you start feeling this just jerking, like it feels like the transmission's going out. Uh, but I read online that maybe that might be an ignition issue with the coil unplugs because they're known for going out. And so I decided to start probing those. Of course, with the V6 engine, three of those plugs are in the front where they're really easy to see. And three of them are underneath the intake manifold where they're really hard to get to. And I wanted to check them out before I go tearing the intake off of there. So I got a pin out for the computer. And you can see I used my wife's quilting needles and found all of the pins for the six different coil unplugs. And I threw my oscilloscope on there and sitting here at idle, the profile looked fantastic. It was the same on all six cylinders and I could rev it and it didn't change. It looked fantastic. So indicating that there was nothing wrong with the coils, but the problem continued. So I had my wife drive and I got in the driver's seat. I'm sorry, I got in the passenger seat, had my wife drive and had her recreate the stumble. We had to find just the right incline of hill on a freeway and just hold it right at that 40, 45 miles an hour. And then it would just stumble, 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 stumble. And I ran wires back in through around the passenger door and had them clamped so they weren't touching each other. It's really important. And from inside the cab, I could switch from uh, coil to coil and monitor the voltage. And I noticed on one of the coil, it was actually on uh, cylinder three, that one of the coils started to behave erratically uh, when that's only when that stumble happened. That was what's weird about this. The I've seen shop videos where guys in the garage are checking these things at idle and you can see one is just absolutely dead. There's no charging of the coil at all. It's totally shorted out and then it's shorting out the computer or you, you can just see it immediately at idle. What was so bizarre about this one is everything looked clean at idle and cruise and acceleration. Everything looked nice and clean. It only happened at that 1800 RPM, 40, 45 miles an hour, and you couldn't put too much throttle into it or it would shift down out of fifth down into fourth. And didn't matter how much we held it doing that, would not throw a trouble code. So we're left to how do you diagnose this thing? We had to get it under those load conditions and look at the profile of the, we were looking at the voltage. I suppose I, I didn't have a, a current probe to get it on there and actually look at what the current was doing going in and out of that. And also they tell you to, uh, that you can get really high voltage spikes off of these things. Um, my oscilloscope said it's rated for 250 volts input. So I said, you know what? I'm just gonna hook up to this thing and see what I get. I did a bunch of checking. My oscilloscope is still living just fine. So I got away with it. But if you're gonna probe any of these connectors, it's really easy to short something out. If I let any of these pins touch each other and you can see how close they are, if any of those touch each other, I could potentially short out the computer and I'd be replacing this entire uh, ECU, PCM, whatever you want to call them. So, but leaving those in there, I was able to probe and check each one and under just the right conditions, I could see that one was not like the others. Uh, to make sure that that was the issue and that it wasn't just the plugs, I bought a brand new set of plugs, pulled the intake off, put all new plugs in there. And then I took all three, I didn't have to take all three, all three of the uh, coils on the back and moved them up to the front where they were really easy to reach. You can see I, I numbered them four or five, six there. Uh, brought them up where they were easy to reach, put the ones from the front in the back. Again, I was pretty confident that it was that number three cylinder. I moved it up to the, uh, you can see the number six, that's where I've got the new one now. But I moved it up to the number six, went for a test drive, the problem was still there. And when I uh, connected the oscilloscope to number six, uh, it still, it, it showed exactly the same profile. So that behavior followed that coil on plug, replaced the coil on plug, bam, have not had a problem since. So there you go, guys. I'm not sure if you don't have an oscilloscope, I don't know how you, 
how you would find this out. There's no way I could read this with a meter. The behavior is so slight and so analog, if you will, is to, to look at the profile of that, that you really need an oscilloscope to hook up and you've got to get it under those conditions. So if you're driving a Ford Escape, one of these vehicles with coil unplugged, and you've got some kind of stumble going on on the highway, I, I read about examples of this online, uh, and guys, oh, same thing. Oh, my transmission must be going out. Man, this is going to be expensive. And uh, most of them were able to get it. You just keep driving it under those conditions with that stumble, with that jerking. And uh, uh, eventually it throws a code. We could not get this one to throw a code. So just because you've got a stumble doesn't mean that uh, that you're going to have to replace your uh, replace your transmission. Start looking for those coils. But yeah, if it's if it's not going to throw a code, you almost have to get an oscilloscope and start figuring them out. I suppose you could, if you think it's just one, you could buy one and uh, swap out each of these three in the front and see if it goes away. But then now you got to swap it on the three in the back and. Let's see, you could swap it on the three in the front, and if none of that makes it go away, do what I did, pull the intake off, take the ones from the front, put them in the back, take the ones from the back, put them in the front, and now do the same thing. Take that one that you, you know, spend the 40 bucks on a, on a new one and just go one by one. That way you only have to take the intake off once uh, before you find out which one it was. So, I mean, there, there you're taking a risk that, uh, that it is indeed one of the coil unplugs. But there you go, guys. Hopefully that helps somebody.